Hi there, my name is Lucy at Franknet Sewing Machines and today we're going to be looking at the Burnett B37 sewing machine. This is a computerised model. Um, we are also going to be doing another video on the Burnett 38, so do look out for that as well. Should probably be very close to this video in our YouTube channel. And we'll do a little comparison too. Um, but first of all, we're going to get the B37 out of the box and um, see everything that it comes with and then go through some of the key features and have a little try of it. So um, I'll just get it opened so we can see exactly how what we get in here. Fun thing about these though is that they've probably got some of the nicest boxes that we sell machines in, so they're nice and striking, make great gifts. So inside we have our guarantee card and manuals. The B37 has got a soft cover with it, so that's just a little plastic slip cover. And we'll get this bits off here. Oh. Lots of protective packaging. Obviously this is a brand new one, we haven't got this one out before. There we are. So foot control is hidden in the middle, so we'll just pop that one out. And then we've also got hidden in the bottom of the box the power lead and the accessories as well. Okay, so we'll um, get this set up and then go through some of the bits in a bit more detail and uh, have a little try. So now we're going to um, get it set up to do some actual sewing and just have a quick look at the accessories in a bit more detail too, because some of them are hidden away, I've just found. Um, so inside your little accessory pack here, just explain what all these bits actually do. We've got different spool caps. Oh, I probably should just empty these out the box to start off, out the bag to start off with. Pop that one over there. Right. So we've got spool cap, large spool cap. The actual small one that we're going to be using, which is probably suitable for most threads, is actually on the machine. Um, an additional spool pin. So this is so you can actually use a twin needle or use that one for winding on a bobbin instead if you were, if you wanted. A spool net for keeping wayward threads under control. Um, you're getting four bob three bobbins here and actually you've got one inside the machine too, so four bobbins in total. Little seam ripper, little brush for cleaning, some spare needles. This little thing is actually a screwdriver, so um, this is so you can take off your needle plate for cleaning. And then feet-wise, a oh, little spool felt as well, so um, that you can use just for a bit of extra padding. Feet-wise, we've got um, the standard foot on the machine, the button sewing on foot, a satin stitch foot, a zipper foot, and then hidden in the front, which I've just found, is the buttonhole foot, the automatic buttonhole. So we're going to turn the machine on and um, give it a run. I'll just move these out of the way. We've already got a bobbin in there, so I'll just use that one. As I said, we have got the foot control too, but the machine can actually be ran using a start-stop button. So we're going to use that today just for the purposes of this demonstration, because it is quite fun to use. But when you do have the foot control plugged in, you also have a speed controller here on the front of the machine, so you can limit the speed of your machine. We'll just pop that over that side. So we'll get it turned on. So here we've got a digital LCD display which has got um, details of uh, what stitch we're using, our stitch width and also our stitch length. And these can be altered using the um, keys here. So whatever's highlighted underneath, such as the width there or the length there, that's what you'll be changing with the up and down keys. So if you wanted to get a different stitch, we can then just increase it there and it automatically changes. Where the stitch reference chart is hidden away is quite ingenious, I think. It's normally in there, but it's not, it's in the packet. <laughs> That's where it can live, is in there. But um, yes, yeah, so this is the stitch reference chart, so it's quite handy to have, and you can always get these online as well. It's also got bobbin winding and threading all within this little reference. So we've got here a total of 50 stitches on this machine, um, including automatic buttonholes and eyelets, darning programs, as well as all of the um, utility stitches that you would need and some decorative and applique stitches too. So if I wanted to choose for example stitch number five 
I'll just make sure I've got that highlighted there and go to stitch number five. And it automatically changes the width and the length for me, which is a great thing about a digital machine like this. So we'll get a bobbin wound up and um, give it a go. So I'm gonna take the one from out underneath here. So we lift up the bobbin cover, make sure you keep that safe, pop out a bobbin, put this on top here onto the bobbin winder. Just a nice firm push down. I'm gonna just take some thread. We're using a nice smooth Gutterman thread here, which runs through loads of different machines really, really nicely. And pop this up here. I'm gonna use this size spool cap because that fits nice and neatly on the end of that spool, as you can see. So for winding on the bobbin, we're gonna follow the dotted line arrow. So that is going just around this part here, over to the, the bobbin tensioner and then we're going to wind it around the bobbin just to get it started. On the picture it does say you can pop it through the hole as well on the bobbin and um, that can be quite fiddly so often you can get it started use just winding this around. I'm going to push it over. The machine then knows that we're onto the bobbin winder automatically because of a sensor there and we can press our start button to wind it on and we can control the speed of how that winds on here. And you can stop that at any point, but when it is a full bobbin, it will kind of start to put pressure on the um, bobbin uh, stopper here and pop it over. I'm going to release the bobbin there. Oh, and wind it. And there is a little trimmer on the side that I'm just going to use to cut the, the bobbin thread because I haven't got a pair of scissors. <laughs> so loading the bobbin into the machine, we're going to drop it in with the um, thread coming off to the left. And this is all in the picture that you can see on the actual bobbin um, cover as well. There is then a little gap at the bottom and this is the tent bobbin tension. So I'm just gonna make sure that the thread goes into that and following the direction of that arrow. I've got tension on there. And then we'll thread up the rest of the machine. So then bring up the bobbin thread before we put the cover on. So we're going to go around the back of here, down the front, up and into the take up link. I'm just going to make sure the needle's in the right position. There we are. Oh, got it in. Down the front and we do have a little needle threader on here too. So since I've just used that needle up and down button, I know that my needle's in the highest position so I can bring this threader down engage it with the needle, hold my thread around the front of the needle and that will make a little loop out the back so that we can then just pull that loop through. Then just do the needle up and down on the button here because all these automatic features do make the machine super easy to use and um, really do mean that you can not really do it wrong if you do things in the right order and that's what I do like about these digital machines. It means that everything is in its right place and you don't have to worry basically. So with that threaded, you can see how easy that is to use that threader and how to put in your bobbin. There's no fiddling around with different cases with these top loading models, it's fantastic. Lower the foot down and let's give it a little run. So we'll choose our speed. I'm going to go on a medium one. We've got the zigzag selected, so that's what we're expecting to happen. And we can increase or decrease our speed with the start-stop button. So it does mean that you can go even go really, really slow on this machine. And when you want to stop, you can just touch the button and it will just stop wherever you have commanded it. We can use the tying off as well. This is this target button here next to the needle up and down. So um, if we were to press that and then press the start button, you'll see it will do a securing stitch. So at any point in time, you can do a locking stitch for your work. There is the traditional reversing button as well. So if we were doing um, like normal seams where we want to use a straight stitch. So if I went to stitch number 01, we could then do a start. Obviously, we're going very slow here. Maybe just go a little bit faster and then do a reverse. Hold that down and then release it. And then it comes forwards again to start and finish your work.
it's as easy as that. We've got the free arm as well on this model, so I'm just going to pull this away gently and you'll see because of the digital nature of the machine with it stopping up in the air, the needle, all the way, you get just you can pull out your threads nice and easily and use the trimmer at the side. So by pulling this away we've got access to the free arm so that you can do um, sleeves and trouser legs and anything like that, very easy to get around there, lots of space. You can also get quilting kits and tables available for a model like this where you would actually sit around and extend that area. Maybe we'll do another video on one of those. I'll pop that back on. And then we can keep our little stitch reference chart once it's out of the packet in there, back in that little slot. So it's nice and safe so we don't lose it. So that's a bit of an overview of the Burnett 37. Um, it's a really simple to use, easy machine, great selection of basic stitches and um, I think that it would be yeah it's a really great model for kind of all kinds of dressmaking applications even if you wanted to get started in quilting as I said the additional things that you can get for it would really you know increase the size of the table you could the range of feet that are available as well there's loads of um, additional feet like walking feet free motion feet this machine can do it all um, oh yes free motion actually there is a lever on the back in order to drop the feed dogs down um, any machine actually kind of in this kind of price range does have that facility but the lever is just at the back there might be useful just to see that quickly because it is some people it's just here so that's the feed dogs engaged which the machine will come automatically out the box and then you just push it over to the other side to have them disengaged but yeah once you've got to know the machine and you might want to go into free motion that's where you'll do it <laughs> so that's a bit about the Burnett 37 um, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video about it all and it's been informative for you and um, we're now going to do we have also got a bit of a comparison with the Burnett 38 as well which is the model just above so if you fancy giving that one a watch too that should be on next hope to see you soon bye for now